Each day we've watched him arrive at court, a frail elderly family man with his wife and daughter, a much loved entertainer of 60 years. But there's another side to Rolf Harris. I don't know how he lives his life day to day. And I don't know how he sleeps at night. Back in 1978, he'd already been a TV star for 25 years. Welcome to the show. Here we are. At the time, he lived in Sydenham in South London. 34 years later, a woman came forward saying during those years, Rolf Harris sexually assaulted her, not once, but repeatedly. She'd been a friend of Rolf Harris's daughter. He'd known her ever since she was a little girl. And the abuse began when she was 13 years old. It was back in the late 60s, around the time he received an MBE, when little Bindi here became friends with the girl. It was this letter, written to her father 30 years later, that was proof of a relationship. He said nothing happened before the age of 18. Her family didn't believe him, neither did the jury. I'm Jake the Pig, diddly, 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 with his extra leg. Diddly, diddly, diddly. During the trial, he treated the court at one point to a burst of Jake the Peg. But another Rolf Harris was beginning to emerge. And we can now see there were perhaps some hints. Take this joke of his, recorded at a live show. Take them off. No, no. <laughs> Get them off. No. I am only 13. This is no time to be superstitious. A pattern was appearing. Women came forward from across Britain, across the world. Near Portsmouth, one woman says she was eight at the time, maybe even younger when she was assaulted, after asking for an autograph. In Cambridge, at a TV show in the 70s, he denied he'd even set foot in Cambridge before 2010. And then this footage emerged during the trial. And welcome to Cambridge. Um, it was in Cambridge in the 70s. ITV's version of It's a Knockout. He was a team captain. In southeast London, an Australian teenager assaulted during a meal at a pub. Tonya Lee was 15 at the time. It's taken her 28 years to speak out. I was absolutely petrified, and I, um, you know, I just, I wanted to scream, but I didn't. I knew that what he what he'd done was wrong. I was embarrassed as well, and then I thought. Like, I didn't want to tell anybody that he'd touched me. The list goes on. Malta, an 18-year-old. New Zealand, a 16-year-old. Australia, a 12-year-old. One TV makeup artist said they had a name for him. The Octopus. This was a man who'd been a children's entertainer for 60 years. <laughs> well, there we are. That's Oliver Pollitt, the nice old octopus. He'd even fronted a campaign here, about child abuse. Place. Breathe that air, you feel it all over your skin. It's good, and that sort of feeling you want to give somebody a big hug like that, or one of those little pats makes you feel good. And it's that sort of touching I want to talk about today because it helps you to understand the sort of touching that doesn't make you feel too good. It's so what a smooth talker. No, but the outfit is absolutely... In 1986, he appeared on breakfast television to promote the campaign. I, I had such a marvellous childhood, you know, as a kid no hint of anything nasty anywhere and uh, in a way it's it's a sort of a p trying to pay back this was a man generations of children had trusted you get to an age when nothing is meant to shock you i find it shocking because it is a bit of your childhood being ripped apart quite apart from the childhoods he, he of these women he seems to have ripped apart he's been on tv since the 50s that glittering career, that artistic talent. However, there is, it seems, another side to Rolf Harris that has, until now, been hidden. David Salito, BBC News.